Commercial real estate can be a lucrative investment opportunity for those looking to diversify their portfolio and generate passive income. Overall, it's pretty straightforward. The investor buys a commercial building, rents it out to a tenant, and collects their monthly rent payments each month. However, it can also get pretty complicated and require in-depth knowledge and research. Let's discuss how commercial real estate really works and what you need to know to get started. And stay tuned because at the end of the video, I'm gonna walk you through a few of my properties and how they work. First, the types of commercial real estate properties. Commercial real estate encompasses a wide range of property types that are primarily for business purposes. At its most basic definition, anywhere you wouldn't personally live. Some of the most common include office, which is often used for professional or administrative work, such as marketing companies, accounting firms, and other businesses. Retail, which is typically used for retail businesses, such as stores, restaurants, and so on. And industrial, which are properties used for warehousing, manufacturing, or production. So why do people invest in commercial real estate? Well, there are some pretty outstanding benefits to owning commercial properties that really put it above any other investment opportunities. The first and most sought after is the benefit of passive income from rent collection. Commercial properties have tenants that pay you rent each month and they tend to have longer lease terms than apartments or single family residential properties, which gives you a much more stable income stream. Another also passive benefit of investing in commercial real estate is the potential for appreciation. Property value historically increases over time at about 3% per year, which means that not only will your tenant be paying down your mortgage each month, but you'll also be able to sell for a higher price and therefore profit. In addition to those two, commercial properties also provide diversification for your investment portfolio. Spreading these investments across different asset classes such as stocks, bonds, and real estate can help spread out your risk and potentially increase your returns. Now for the different types of investment strategies. One of my favorite parts of commercial real estate is just how many ways there are to approach any given deal. You're not really boxed into just buying a property, renovating it, and renting it to a tenant. You could, of course, do that with a strategy called the Burr which was made famous by Bigger Pockets, where you buy, rehab, rent, refinance, and repeat the process. Essentially, you're fixing the place up, renting it for higher than it would have previously, which then increases the value, and allows you to pull more equity out of the property on a refinance so that you can take that cash and do it again and again. But that's not your only option. You could also develop the site ground up, invest in triple net properties across the country, buy in the path of development and land bank, and even do what I call the commercial house hack. You can learn more about all of these strategies in this video here. Let's move on to the transaction process for commercial real estate. In many ways, the process of buying and selling commercial properties is the same as residential, but it can also be very different. Really, the biggest difference is that commercial real estate transactions are typically conducted through commercial vendors, like a commercial real estate broker, commercial real estate attorney, commercial real estate contractor, etc. These professionals have specialized knowledge of how commercial real estate works and will help you throughout the process with all of your needs. Once you've identified a property, you'll need to conduct your due diligence to ensure that the property is a good investment. This review is a bit more intense than you'll typically see in residential and can involve a survey, environmental engineering, analyzing the local market, evaluating the tenants and properties financials, and so much more. Once you've decided to move forward with buying the property, you'll then negotiate the purchase price and terms with the seller, which can include the closing date, contingencies, and don't forget that everything in commercial real estate transactions is negotiable. And there are no standard forms on these deals, so be sure to get your attorney involved. Once you've acquired the property, you'll likely hire a property management company to manage the asset and collect rent from the tenants to help make this investment more passive on your part. Now for financing options in commercial real estate. Leverage is an amazing benefit to buying commercial properties, meaning you can use other people's and banks' money to acquire these assets. There are several financing options available to you. Traditional bank loans, which are available from banks and other financial institutions. These loans typically require a down payment in the range of 20 to 35%, and they do have some strict qualification requirements. Private loans, which can come from private money firms or individuals, and typically have higher interest rates, like 12% or higher 
but they may be more flexible in their other terms than a traditional bank would be. And finally, crowdfunding, which allows investors to pull their resources together to buy commercial real estate properties. This method can provide you with access to larger investment opportunities and cost less out of your pocket. And those are just to name a few of the financing opportunities out there available to you. Let's dive into the risks and challenges of commercial real estate investing. Now, investing in commercial real estate can be a lucrative opportunity, but I'd just be lying to you if I made it seem like it's all butterflies and rainbows without any potential risks and challenges, such as market fluctuations, which are changes in the local market that can impact the value of commercial real estate properties and the potential for rental income. Look at San Francisco post-pandemic. Vacancy risk. If your tenants leave the property, it will have a direct impact on your monthly rental income and can be expensive to fill those spaces up with new tenants. Property maintenance and repairs. Commercial properties typically require more maintenance and repairs than residential properties because they're more heavily used in traffic, which can be expensive and time consuming depending on how your leases are structured. And there's so much more. So be sure to do your research before you dive into buying commercial real estate. So if you're interested in adding commercial real estate to your portfolio, here's how to get started. First, educate yourself. Commercial real estate investing can be incredibly complex. So it's important to do your research and educate yourself before you get started. Watch the YouTube videos, take the courses, read the books, listen to the podcasts, I think you get it. Find a mentor. Having an experienced mentor on your side can help you navigate the commercial real estate market and avoid common pitfalls and scale your investing that much faster. Then build your network. Surround yourself with a strong network of industry professionals like brokers, attorneys, vendors, property managers. Not only can they help you throughout the deal, they may be able to find opportunities for you. And finally, start small. Investing in commercial real estate isn't cheap and mistakes can be costly. So it's important to start small and build your portfolio over time. My first building was only $575,000, and we've since scaled to $20 million acquisitions, but I couldn't have just started at that high of a price point. Now let's get out and check out three properties, and I'm gonna tell you how they work. All right, you might recognize this property from our Airbnb development video a couple of weeks ago. It's a property that we acquired off of a direct mailer back in 2020 for about 430,000. Let me tell you a little bit more about this one. So this is a smaller property, it's about 2,000 feet, and we bought it to rent it out to a retail tenant. We actually had it leased before we closed on the property, one of the benefits of being a commercial real estate broker, which got us an appraisal of 650,000. That was basically $200,000 in equity day one. Now, you can tell the space never got built out. The tenant got in, they demoed the space, and then they ran out of money and stopped paying us rent. So we've decided to pivot on this project. So that's another thing to keep in mind is have a little bit of flexibility with what you're doing. We're now gonna tear this down and build four Airbnb units on this site. Okay, so now we're here at my office building, which is in East Nashville. It's actually next door to the wash, which is the next property I'm gonna show you. And that's the main reason we bought this. We were under contract on the wash and this one came available. So I said, yeah, let's buy it. It was $480,000. I don't think we put anything into it. I originally had it rented out to another business that I was a partner in. And we recently moved our offices for the Cobble Group into it. So we were able to get an owner occupied commercial real estate loan on this one. One thing I will say on all three of these properties, we used a traditional bank loan for these projects somewhere between 20 and 25% down is what we put uh, with three different banks actually. But this has been a great one. It's basically a commercial house hack, right? My commercial real estate businesses are paying rent on a property that I own personally. So they're paying down the mortgage on an asset that I own and I'm getting taxed less on the passive income derived from the asset. All right, so here we are at the wash. This was a very different project where the first one was a renovation and a lease to a tenant, very hands-off. My office building, also very hands-off. The wash was a completely new development where we had to take an old car wash, invest a whole bunch of money into it to turn it into five micro restaurants and a bar in order to rent it to these tenants. So we're planning on holding this one for the long term, but uh, there's three very different projects for you to kind of take a look at how commercial real estate really works. So. There are many benefits to investing in commercial real estate, and we didn't even get to cover everything in here because this is just a brief overview. 
It can definitely be a well-paying opportunity for anyone wanting diversification in their portfolio and passive income. I mean, everyone wants to make money while they're sleeping, right? However, it is a complex industry that requires a lot of knowledge, a lot of research, and plenty of due diligence. Make sure you do it right. So there you have it for an overview of how commercial real estate works. For a deeper dive, check out this playlist on commercial real estate for beginners.